We got a, a ball with a mass of five kilograms dropped from a height of 10 meters. What is the velocity of the ball right before it hits? Of course, when it hits, it's going to, you know, bounce and whatever and come back up. That's uh, impact. And we're going to look at that later tonight. Okay. So but right now, all we want to do is look at taking potential energy of gra the potential energy of gravity, mgh, equaling the kinetic energy right before it hits one half mv squared. Okay. So let's see what you come up with using, um, uh, using those, those uh, formulas that we just got got talked about here. Prop, this is probably the most famous of the uh, of the uh, conservation of energy problems. Okay. Up here, of course, we're starting at one, and we're going to be um, going down to here to two. I'm going to use this as the elevation, what's called datum. I'll make that zero, so therefore, it's uh, the uh, height is uh, ten. So we have, uh, uh, I hate this notation, but T1 plus V1 equals uh, T2 plus V2, the uh, kinetic plus potential. In this case, we've only got the potential energy of gravity uh, at 1 will equal what we have it at 2. So what we have is, uh, this T is kinetic energy, so what we have is really 1 half MV1 squared plus MGH1 is equal to one half m v two squared plus m g h two. Okay, this is the this is the these right here are the potential energy of uh, of gravity. M g h. Okay, so what I do underneath each one of them is say, okay, what do I know? Again, one of the things I meant to say uh, earlier when I did that one with the uh, block sliding down the incline, uh, work energy is really one equation. So you only have one unknown, okay? Everything else has got to be known, okay? So here, we're going to release it, uh, drop from a height of 10 inches, so it's released from rest, so uh, V1 equals zero. Uh, H1, because of the datum down here, H1 is going to equal uh, 10 meters. Uh, down here, V2, well, that's what we're looking for. So there's our there's the unknown we're looking for. And then H2, well, when it gets down to here, it will be zero elevation. So H2 is equal to zero. So without putting the numbers in here, what we have really is zero plus MGH1 is equal to one half m v two squared plus zero. Okay, and notice what happens. This happens all the time. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much it weighs. You know, you would you would bet money that it does. Well, it doesn't. Okay, and so uh, we're looking for uh, v two, right? What's the what's the uh, velocity? So we can uh, rearrange this, uh, multiply both sides by two, uh, and get the uh, uh, velocity on the left hand side. So we get v two squared equals two g h one, or v two is equal to the square root of two g h one. Okay. Probably one of the most famous equations in all of engineering, actually, uh, is the uh, the giving up of kinetic energy, uh, of potential energy into um, kinetic energy. This will be an equation we'll use uh, in fluids uh, when we say, if, if uh, uh, what's the flow from a tank that's H1 deep? What's the velocity coming out of the opening, out of the spigot? If you open the spigot, what's its velocity? Well, it's going to be the square root of 2GH. Okay? Uh, we'll see that when we get to uh, uh, the Bernoulli equation. Okay, which is really conservation of energy, but it's got an extra force due to pressure. Okay, so that's a, but we won't talk about pressure now. Leave that for another day. I can get this to stay up there. Okay, well now, now we can put in our our the numbers that we have. It's that this the general result, um, and so uh, V two is equal to. Uh, the square root of uh, 2 times g. In this case, this is a uh, metric problem. So we got 9.8 meters per uh, second squared times the height, which is 10 meters. 
So what we got here is uh, meters squared, second squared. So what we're going to end up with is good meters per second. And if we do that, we will get uh, 14, and that is answer C.